So today's episode of NCIX Tech Tips is going to be all about external storage. I've got a couple of external storage enclosures here and the reason I have more than one is that there are now four mainstream standards for external storage, not including network. I'm talking drives you plug right into the back of your computer so that you can copy files to or from them for your storage or yeah, well, storage, okay. So one of the ones I have here is full of all kinds of different connectivity. This one has FireWire, eSATA, and USB 2. And the other one is a new enclosure. This is a USB 3 enclosure. And because it's USB 3, it's also backwards compatible with USB 2. But the main purpose today is to compare all of these four different interfaces in terms of speed and in terms of reliability. So for my next trick, I'm going to show you all of the different cables and connectors that are involved in today's episode of Tech Tips. First of all, you've got your standard USB 2.0. This guy's been around for a very, very long time. You probably recognize it. It plugs into a standard USB port, which you will find on the back of your motherboard and plugs in just like that. Now, a USB 3.0 port is a little bit different from a USB 2.0 port and the cable is the same. Here, if you look inside the connector, I don't know if you're quite going to be able to see this, but inside the USB 3.0, which is the blue one on your right, there is actually the regular four connectors at the front, and then behind that, there's actually an additional, however many that is, an additional five. So I hope you can see it. If you can't, you're just going to have to trust me. That is how USB 3.0 is able to operate up to 10 times faster than USB 2.0. Right now on most motherboards, the USB 3.0 ports are color coded blue and they will look just like a USB 2.0 port. So you plug it in just like that. Now our next connector here is FireWire. This guy's been around forever. It's not very fast and honestly, I'm going to spoil a bit of the surprise today. I found it to be incredibly unreliable but it looks like this and the connector on the back of your motherboard will look either like this one right here, and we'll plug in like that, or it'll look like that. And to be perfectly honest, I've hardly used FireWire in my life. I don't even know what that plugs into. Next, we have eSATA. eSATA was a bit of a stopgap solution, but that doesn't make it any less legitimate. It's kind of like a SATA connector. It has the same number of pins, but instead of an L shape on its uh, on the uh, slot inside it, it's just a straight slot. So that will plug into an eSATA connector, which looks like this and goes just like that. Now one more thing I have to show you before the cameraman stops the shot here and then I have to redo the whole thing is that the USB 2.0 cable all right is also slightly different on the other end. So the U are uh, USB 3.0. So here's USB 3.0 versus USB 2.0. Inside the standard 2.0 cable there's two connectors on the top and two on the bottom for a total of four and then in the USB 3.0 cable you've got two in the bottom, two in the top of that bottom groove and so that's how you get backwards compatibility and then up at the top that's where your additional five connectors are so that's how you get that additional speed. So I should say right off the bat some of my test results were Hard for me to figure out, actually. I'll start with telling you exactly how I came to the conclusions I did. So first of all, I'm using a Gigabyte 890 FXA UD7 motherboard. This is a very high-end motherboard, and that's what I had to find in order to get a motherboard that has support for all of these different connections all on the same board. Now, in terms of my actual source files and my destination files, I used what's in my test files folder here. So my for my large file transfer, I used one movie clip totaling about three gigabytes and then for my small file transfer I grabbed a whole bunch of stuff off of my work computer and let me see what the overall size is so it's about 500 megs because the way that controllers handle large files large long sequential writes or large rather fragmented writes can be a little bit different. So that's one of the things that explains some of the differences we saw. And one other thing that I also did in order to eliminate any of the interfaces as a bottleneck was I used SSD drives. So for the boot drive, I used an Intel X25M 80 gig because it supports read speeds that are faster than pretty much any of these controllers can take advantage of. And then for the write drive, the drive that I actually installed inside the two enclosures and then finally did an internal transfer. So I've 
I've actually got it hooked up to the machine right now, is an OCZ Vertex 2 because supporting writes up to 250 megabytes per second, that eliminates that drive as a bottleneck. So I could have used a more typical three and a half inch hard drive and that is what most users would end up using. So you might see performance here that's a little faster than you'd get at home, but I wanted to actually compare all the interfaces, not necessarily all of the interfaces that are just sort of maxed out because the hard drive can only go so fast. So I'll do a quick demo of exactly how I ran the tests on what I found to be the fastest interface, which was, surprise, surprise, hooking both drives up to an internal connector on the uh, ATI SB850 Southbridge. So I copied them from the test files folder, I pasted and then pressed start at the same time. I waited until the bar reaches the end, and that might take a little while here, and then basically I press stop. So it's not super scientific, but down to um, approximately the second, it should be accurate enough. So while this is copying, I'll tell you briefly exactly how fast all of the different interfaces were. With all of my big file copies, I found that the internal connection copied it in 31 seconds, and I'm totally using a cheat sheet here, but I'm not even gonna hide it. I found that the eSATA connector copied it in 37 seconds. The USB 3.0 connector copied it in 36 seconds with USB 2.0 coming up at the very end at 1 minute 41 seconds. So no matter what you're using, it's going to be faster than USB 2. And I should also say that I couldn't get FireWire to work with my enclosure for the life of me. I tried new enclosure. I actually tried three different motherboards with different onboard FireWire chipsets. I couldn't get a three gig copy or three gig file to copy. Period. So FireWire I found to be incredibly unreliable in my testing, though I'm sure somebody somewhere is using it successfully. Anyway, you can see that yeah, my internal big file copied in 32 seconds. I said 31. What are you gonna do? Now for my test where I copy over a thousand files totaling about 500 megs, it's, we see a bit of a reversal here. So first of all, let me just start my test. And so you can see it in real time running on SATA. So this is an internal SATA interface. So dialogue's gone about six seconds, which is uh, good. That's what I had last time too. So one of the things that I saw was that the internal SATA and the eSATA were both blindingly fast for this one. Six seconds for both of them. And then USB 3, which was neck and neck with eSATA, actually fell to 11 seconds. So it took almost double. And I believe the reason for that is the way that the controller is managing all of those little writes is a little bit different for USB versus an actual proper SATA connection. So a little bit gets lost in translation, but it's still very fast. Now for USB 2.0, it took a whopping 23 seconds, which is about four times the fastest connections. And then for FireWire, once again, I could not for the life of me get a file to copy over FireWire. It could be an incompatibility between the chipsets in my drive enclosures and the ones on my motherboards, but I tried a couple different ones. And honestly, it's been a couple days. I'm not willing to fight with it anymore. So I hope you've enjoyed our Tech Tips episode. And while the differences between eSATA and USB 3, which are kind of neck and neck in that upper tier, and USB 2.0 are huge, it's not quite the 10x that's advertised, but it's still going to make a huge difference if you're actually copying large files on a fairly regular basis and you need it to be as fast as possible. Thanks for checking out NCIX Tech Tips on the difference in speed and reliability of all the different external storage solutions.